Hello and welcome to the Mental Health Gaming Podcast. Once again, I am Bradley and joining me this week is someone who found enlightenment in this past week when they was posed the age-old question, Groundhog Day, is it a roguelite or is it a roguelike? What is it, Stu? Ooh, that's a, that's a toughie. I would say a roguelite. Oh, no, you'd be wrong. Oh, and yeah, because he should... dies, doesn't he? So. Well, he never he doesn't get anything extra at the start apart from knowledge, you see, which is what a roguelite gives you. Exactly the same start all the way through. And then you just take what you've actually learned in your in your person brain. <laughs> person brain. I like it. Whereas the roguelite, you can get upgrades. Right, right. Gotcha. But you already knew that because you've achieved enlightenment. Mm. You was just testing, I see. <laughs> okay, let's go with that excuse. I quite like it. <laughs> Do you know what else can be testing? What can be testing? Video games. That's very true. I oh, know. That was a bit more, less tenuous than um, last week's, I suppose. Tiny bit. Uh, yeah. So what video games have you tested this week, Stu? Well, I've carried on testing Deathloop and I've basically given up on it now. And the reason behind that is that I think, and this is going to be a bit controversial, but I think it's a bit Emperor's New Clothes, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. I really do. I don't think it's a bad game, but I'm a little bit baffled by all of the praise that it's getting. And just to sort of frame that a little bit, I think that a lot of reviewers get stuck in a, in a thing where they play so many similar games all the time, similar to one another, that anything that comes along that's new really impresses them in a way that it it doesn't might not necessarily connect with the public yeah uh you know that definitely happens with film reviewers i'm starting to think it it might happen a little bit with game reviewers as well because there's so much in the background there's so much exterior stuff in the game I mean, it's all internal, as that doesn't really make sense. But there's so many things that aren't core gameplay mechanics that are really good. So the artwork is is good. I mean, as I said, I don't like the character models. I think they're gack. But I think the, the backgrounds are phenomenal. I think animations and the style of it is, is really impressive. And the buildings are great. And all the environment design. And just even the sort of the aesthetics of the scene they're, they're just so detailed and they, they really bring you in and it's a little bit like Half-Life Alex, which is a reference that most people won't get because they haven't had the opportunity to play it but it's that kind of density of stuff packed into every room and into every corridor and it's also not just a corridor everything is very open except when there are specific you know places you need to be and so it, it's got great environment design overall. And the, the central idea of it is good. Um, I, I hoped it would become better than just good. But for me, it didn't. So I've put a nearly nine hours on it. And mm. I just still find like, I, I thought that by 10 hours, I'd be pretty much done. And I think that would be the ideal duration. But instead... It just keeps sending you back to the same places, which which would be okay because they're fascinating places. But because the AI is so bad, like really woeful, like very, very, very poor, and the combat itself is pretty rubbish. So like I compared it to Bioshock last week and it is much more like Bioshock than it is anything else. Yeah. That going back into that same loop... The, the mystery drags you forward a bit, but for me, not enough. And I think that it's kind of, there's a push-pull, and I think that some people will find the mystery intriguing enough to carry on past all of the very, very simplistic game mechanics, the combat, and those like me who just get left behind by it. And I think that leaves it as a kind of unfortunately average game, or maybe just above average, mm-hmm. but it, it fails in so many raw gameplay terms that have been conquered like years back that that's a real disappointment and the very last thing I'll say I know I'm rambling on a bit is that it tries to drag in some stuff from Metal Gear Solid 5 so it's got like very dense areas that you revisit over and over you can choose your loadout to go into them you tag people in them just like you did in Far Cry but it was done even better in in Metal Gear because you could use your 
you know, binoculars in a better way. And you have very specific tasks each time you enter that area. So it's got a lot of Metal Gear 5 in there, but with absolutely none of the sophistication in terms of the combat, the movement, um, any of that, really. The the enemies, the uh, stealth system, all of it is incredibly basic and feels even more basic in places than Dishonored did. So mm. for me, it's, it's a, a game for great concepts and great ideas but with a really minimal amount of actual proper fun gameplay in it so i'll be openly honest here for a for a little bit um and this may be sacrilege to many but dishonored both of them when i've played them i enjoyed the maybe the first three four hours of each game and then got bored of them and honestly this sounds like and you're not the only person i've heard say this but it sounds almost very much the same that once you've been through maybe the loop once or twice it kind of feels just as though you're just going through the motion somewhat uh, because it becomes almost fairly predictable in places and it doesn't have enough intrigue to drive it forward yeah yeah another issue that it, that's absolutely right for me that was my impression and another issue for me was that because there's few restrictions on where you can go, you very often end up in areas and doing stuff in areas that really should be gate gate kept <laughs> yeah. for later parts of the game. Because then I find it very tiring when I'm like, ah, or oh, I can just sneak off down here and I might find a new route. And then I'm like, oh, actually I can activate something here. That might help. And then you'll do that and you'll spend like 30, 40 minutes on that track of doing stuff. And then you'll yeah. end that that period of time. And then you'll find out the next mission requires you to do the exact same things that you've just done because it didn't lock you out of doing them. And it's like, yeah, I see what they've done. They've tried to be really sophisticated and go, oh, well, you know, yeah, it's there, but it won't have any value to what you're doing at the moment. It's like, well, yes, but you can't have it both ways. You can't say this is, is a, a chunk of game designed for the future, and but also say, oh, but it's fully accessible now, including all of the controls. Mm. Not without a lot of refinement. And it, it does feel to me, and this is often a lazy crutch for people reviewing games, but it does feel to me as though this, is, this needed another year in development. Uh, it needed to be rebalanced. You know, it needed to have more content in it needed to have more gatekeeping uh and i think so yeah so what you might be saying is nice bit of early access on the sony system ready for its proper release on the xbox next year <laughs> yeah that'll be <laughs> yeah it'll be called cool. <laughs> death loop re-looped edition and it'll have everything fixed <laughs> yeah. death loop definitive ah sorry sony guys yeah, um, yeah. Um, Obviously, that I, I, as soon as you started saying about it, it sounds like it, you know, that whole crutch of it's oh, it could do with maybe a little bit longer in the oven. And all I can think of is I've got to make, I've got to make the comment. It's a Sony, it's an Xbox owned Sony exclusive that's not that feels like it needs more doing to it. As you <laughs> totally. said, about a year when the exclusivity ends. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's just really funny that there's been. Like all the releases, I think of all the the major releases I've played this year feel duff in some way. Like there's yeah. a, there's some there's some COVIDy kind of <laughs> handprint yeah. all over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a start. I think so many games feel like they are have lost the cohesiveness they probably would have otherwise had. They've had to, and again, this, I, I, I won't blame the AAA publishers or anyone for this. It's, you know, it's completely different. And I'd rather we've got coming out what we've got coming out rather than nothing, because it means people have been able to stay in the job for one. Um, and it's given us all something to look forward to at times. And, but yeah, the games that are coming out, even on the indie sense as well, feel like they've lost something. And I can't put my finger on what it is exactly. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, and I think that it's probably indefinable because they couldn't define it. Because if no. they if they could define it, like it needs longer with the beta testers, it needs longer with the the gameplay team, you know, the the, the play testers, uh, it needs longer with the script writers. I mean, if they could define exactly what it is, it feels like every game is missing that last twenty percent of polish. Yeah, 
Yeah, that one hundred percent. And no, no, twenty percent. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you said one hundred percent. Oh <laughs> yeah, so oh, that's a good joke. Uh, um, yeah, I'm ADHD, yeah. and it went completely over my head at that point. <laughs> it's only until I listen back, I'll go, "Oh yeah, I get that." Um, oh, and the fact you just pointed it out. <laughs> yep. But, so I'm going to change it up. I was going to be talking about one game initially, but I'll save that one to the end because it kind of this flows into two other games I've been playing this past week or so that I think have similar problems to Deathloop. And the first one of those is Kataria Fables, uh, which is okay. a in, it's a, it's an indie game, shock horror. And basically, it's an action adventure RPG where you're this little feline thing and you go on this very bland adventure story type adventure. But it's like ARPG elements in it. It's got crafting in it, open exploration and farming that are in there. Uh, you get sent on like you are you're this cat warrior and you've got to go and bloody blah, blah, blah all the usual crap you get in those generic fantasy stories and it's a game that on the surface looks absolutely wonderful it looks beautiful to look at the art style is very cartoonish in the right way it's a gorgeous looking game and so much effort seems to have gone into the aesthetics of it um but unfortunately the game as a whole loses something the second you scratch beneath that veneer and it feels like they try to do too much within the game so the main focus is you go around these semi-open worlds i mean they're not massive but they're they're, they're open um you get annoyingly there's these little loading screens between each area you go to and you battle various enemies you can you get materials and you use that to upgrade and craft new weapons, different customization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's no proper skill level in there, but there's some, so you can level up. But the enemies don't really level up, so they become almost like pointless being there. And the progression, you got this main quest, but it's mainly made up of lots of fetch quests within the game, uh, which is weird. If it was dogs, I would have understood it, but not in a cat game but it's um well <laughs> that is a good joke <laughs> yes thank you but yeah so there's lots of fetch quests go here do this so like almost mmo like in terms of what you're doing um, but it's put into this fairly small overworld that needs loading that that really bugged me I'm, i don't want to focus on like, this is the adhd now the loading like we're only talking seconds but it's going from one small area to another small area and it needs to load it's like ah don't do that yeah um, but but it feels like a game they've tried to try and expand. You know, the combat's serviceable. It's okay. The combat's okay. It's not the worst I've done. It's definitely not other levels of like Hades or or things like that. But yeah, it's serviceable. But it everything just feels a bit oh, and it feels like they stretch they stretch things too far rather than sort of putting a core focus on two elements or one element, which is further exasperated by the fact there's farming in it, which just feels tacked on and pointless. It feels very vanilla, the farming, as though you could, it didn't even need to be there. Right. I, 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 you know, you can use it to get food and extra materials, but not enough that it overrules what you can find in the field. And even then, you don't feel you need much of it. Whereas if they'd have turned around and made this maybe a level based game where you go from dungeon to dungeon and you can do the upgrades and focused on those levels being really sort of like laser laser focused designs i think you could have had something really good but as it is you've got the same areas to go back and forth in and after the first hour of going oh that's nice that's nice and it just ugh, it turns into a grind with it's a game with no grind but feels like it's got a grind yeah and it's just honestly it's bang average and he's i mean literally right in that average point because it's not bad everything's coherent and works individually but not together, which stops it becoming a decent game that I'd like to recommend or go back to. You know what I'm like. If I find a game that's got a couple of bits that have got issues with it, I'll go, it's got these issues, but you still have this fun. This one, I just felt meh about. And I feel, again, I don't like saying it, but unfortunately, it's a game I wanted to like. But yeah, couldn't get past a few hours with it before deleting it, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always find it kind of 
it's all right if your character doesn't develop very fast. Like, it doesn't matter whether it's like an RPG or whether mm. it's a, a fighting game or anything like that. Like, if you if what you do is like good, interesting, you know, good action based around your character, it's it's the stuff around you that has to change because it's got to build up and get like more sophisticated and and the level design's got to reflect your skill and all that sort of stuff and and getting that you know sophistication of on the curve on the right curve so that you're meeting it at the right point that that can be really difficult and it sounds as though this kind of because it throws too much stuff in that it doesn't hit on the curve correctly is that fair to say yeah 100 percent. if they'd have taken of the different elements in, if they'd have taken half of them out and put those to the side maybe saved them for a sequel and focused on this and this you'd have had a much more enjoyable experience and they could have Develop that further. Um, ironically, much like another cat based game, Cat Quest does. Cat Quest is, it starts off focused on these bits, and Cat Quest 2 builds on it quite successfully. Doesn't throw loads extra, but layers it just enough that it's a sequel that feels like a sequel, but fits and builds on what it done well in the first game. Whereas this seems to just try to throw, it wants to be. It wants to be like a dungeon action RPG. It wants to be a Stardew Valley, but without actually understanding what makes those games tick properly. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just think, again, they could have looked at it, pulled some bits back and just focused, and that's unfortunately let the game down. Yeah, yeah. It's always the thing with cross crossing genres, isn't it? It's just like, if it was that easy and the rewards were that great it would happen all the time but there's just not many cross genre games that really work they they're really few and far between no uh, but following off of that i mean i, I want to talk about another one before you talk about what what you've had next it kind of really does follow on because Katara fables wasn't an overhyped game um, it kind of it was one of those that got mentioned now and again in indie circles and people were looking forward to because how it looked but then we've got indie games that get overhyped and i think due to the lack of big budget games for most for, for like the the triple a crowd and things like that and the pandemic um megan foxy's skatebird falls into this trap and it has had in some circles a brutal reaction to it um so i've played it and i feel for megan in a way because she was um they were put up on this pedestal of oh this is going to be amazing i'm probably given more attention than 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 they probably would have otherwise got at any other point in any other year of video games so what you've got here is essentially a quirky skateboarding game where a little bird skateboards. Um, there's some story behind it. Uh, it's nonsensical to a degree, but whatever, I drives it forward. But there's a little bird on a skateboard. The physics in the game are floaty at places. They don't feel like other skateboard games you may play, but it's a little bird on a skateboard. The controls are a bit Tony Hawk uh, when we're probably, we've moved on from that, but it's a little bird on a skateboard. The soundtrack, I, I didn't get on with the soundtrack one little bit. Um, I don't know why, um, but I, I like Megan, but I'm going to say the soundtrack's awful. Your taste in music is dreadful, but it's a little, skate, little bird on a skateboard. Um, graphically, it looks okay in places, but that little bird on a skateboard looks amazing and is full of character. Um, and it's not, it's not a great game. Um, but it's a quirky, fun title that if we wasn't in the situation we was in and it wasn't being heralded as something that it's not, it's a single person passion project. Um, she like Megan's had help from outside sources and stuff like that. But on the whole, it's a single person passion project and they made a game for them. Anyone who's seen Megan's Twitter over the past couple of years will know that they've had issues with um, some physics getting it to work. And you've seen it laid bare what, what's gone into the development of this. Um, and as I said, it's not come out perfect. You know, there's lots of faults with it. But I think what's happened is 
the momentum on marketing on this, not through Megan's fault or anything, has just grown and grown and grown. And I don't know what people were expecting from a little bird on a skateboard. Honestly, what could they have been expecting other than it was just a quirky title? And as I said, if you're going to pick it, pick it apart, which you can do, yeah, there's this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. But do you know what? I still had fun with it for half an hour. Went away, came back, played another half hour, still had fun with it. Um, and my only criticism is that there's times it's really accessible, by the way. You can turn off different mechanics to your own, to, to, to whatever you need. So if you're struggling with like the balancing mechanics on grind, to turn that off. Absolutely brilliant accessibility there. But then you get other things where, for me, it goes, just enjoy your time with this game. But then it has some challenges that make you feel like it's just a bit too difficult to do this particular challenge. Yeah. So mm. it's like someone's turned around to you and gone, what do you like for dinner? I'll cook you anything you want. And you've gone, oh, do you know what? Love a bolognese. And they've gone, yeah, go on, I'll make you a lovely bolognese, but you must eat the mushrooms in it. It's like, uh, uh, I don't want to do that bit. Can I have it without the mushrooms? Yeah, you can have any pasta you want, but you will eat those mushrooms. And it's kind of what the game does, and it's just yeah. I don't I don't know why it just feels really odd. I mean, maybe it didn't to Megan. Maybe that's something she, like Megan really liked, but um, but yeah, it's it doesn't deserve the hate it's been getting in some circles. But to be honest and to be critical, I think it's a victim of its own marketing success. And it, I, I don't want to say it's, a, it's just a letdown, but I, I, I even overhyped it in my own mind, and yeah, I, I feel I, no, I've not, I'm not let down because that's putting the blame on Megan, and that's not fair. It hasn't met my expectations that I set for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, checking my notes, it's really no, I can't, I can't use that. Looking at the website because I am at, I've actually looked at the website, yeah, and it has a merchandise page for yeah. Skatebird, mm. and that's just incredibly presumptuous. It's all it's way hipster. Like the whole aesthetic of it seems like really hipster. Like they're just trying to bake in. Oh, you know, it's a multi merchandise opportunity right from it being released. And it's like. Dude, you're an indie studio. You've got to make this game land. It's got to be really good. Yeah, you've sold it to Microsoft, but you know, you know, look at it properly. Compare yourself yeah. to things like Horatio Go Snowboarding, and go. Are we where we need to be? Before you start sticking out a load of merchandise, you so, know. Yeah, and, and this, this again comes from the fact that Megan is very active on Twitter, and the community built around the game from the second it was announced. So I think people were clamouring after merch. And I wouldn't say that they pushed the merch. It was just something people wanted, so they did. And probably helped fund the game. Um, so maybe like helped with some self-funding there, which is not a negative thing. But yeah, I think it got too big for what it was. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I agree with you there. There's some presumptions that it would go on above that. But it's a, lear it's a learning thing. I hope it's learned from. And patch to fix a few bits that's fine um but i mean all i will say it's a little bird on a skateboard <laughs> yeah and also because it's like it's it's on um game pass isn't it yeah so it will it will have made them money they'll they'll be in in the black or the red or yeah. whatever the good one is and that's great for them so they will carry on i've not played the game and i uh -huh. don't know how it plays so <laughs> here's my pitch for a, a game called skatebird right yeah. My pitch would be that you're in very urban areas, so not just skate parks, mm -hmm. but and not just uh, like concrete jungle style stuff, and have a lot of foliage. And I would have it that you you do regular tricks and regular skateboarding stuff, but you can also fly. And if you get the right momentum, you can kick the board away. Your bird can do like aerial tricks. And then you can re-land on the skateboard and carry on doing your tricks there. And it gives you a much higher bonus if you avoid, if you like kick the board through like a, a sewer grate and it comes out the other side and you've flown across and you've landed smoothly uh, and all that. And uh, the more flow you keep, the, the more you score. 
that's how I would have done it. Which is, I think, a really good concept, actually. But I think it's beyond the scale of what was possible for this developer at the time. Maybe, yeah. you know, if, if, if Megan, if you're listening, then there you go. There's your sequel right there. Yeah, steal it. I'm not asked. <laughs> yeah, Harvey Bird Skate Man, Skate Bird Man. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you could do um, a um, Rick and Morty bird person tie-in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, again, the hatred it's been getting, and there's some vitriol aimed towards it. Worst game ever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, it's not. It's nowhere near the worst game ever. Be if it's still fun for what it is, um, and it's the, the entitlement of some of the reactions that from people who have played it for nothing is worse than those who are paid for it. It's yeah. like, mm. do one. Um, I, I won't often get angry at people. Just do one. Again, I, I, I will pick it apart. It's not as good as I expected. It's you know, it's not what I wanted it to be. But it's a competent video game, and I've heard sort of like comments on forums, on Twitter, and you know, other places where um, it's some. I said someone mentioned it as an asset flip. It is not an asset flip. Uh, that's the one thing it definitely is not you might not like the game the physics etc etc and it does take a long while to get used to but it's not an asset flip it's not perfect it's easy it, i wouldn't even put it in like sort of like one of my top games of the year which i really fully expected it to be beforehand but it's a fine f- fine time waster and again we spoke about games like this before a game that will give you 20 minutes of fun now and again absolutely fine there's a room for those um because they're half an hour you do some bits you move on you don't need to pump hundreds of hours in at a time to get something from it yeah yeah no i agree i i'm concerned that you know a lot of the negative feedback is because the designer front and center is a woman on you know well trans. if that's the case oh right okay see that's my that's on me for assuming a gender as well apologies for that so yeah so that's you know that's also a concern that that's yeah no, my mind went reaction. my mind went blank beforehand as i was talking going oh i can't remember if megan refers to themselves as they or she so i was, I was going oh, i can't remember which one it is um, so if I have at any point misgendered you, Megan, I do apologise. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, bit of a bit of a nest of vipers that game, by the sounds of it, not because of yes. the game itself. But there you go. Yeah, I decided not to go down that route as well. Um, but it has. I mean, okay, right. Last thing on on skateboard, it has also had a lot of positive reactions because it's a it's a, it's a tiny bird on a skateboard. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme with what you're talking about there. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, that's enough. If it's just been a model of a bird on a skateboard doing nothing, I'd have gone, it's a little tiny bird on a skateboard. Yeah. Well, it looks pretty as well. Yeah. And there's our podcast title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, dear. What else have you been playing? Well, I've been playing a really good game, which is great because I've sort of zipped from stuff to stuff over the last couple of weeks and none of it's really satisfied. But this really does. And it's Flynn, Son of Crimson, which again is on Game Pass. Yeah. But I had absolutely no idea that it was on Game Pass. I saw Mm -hmm. a tweet about it a a few weeks ago. I was like, oh, we'll put it on Steam wishlist. And as soon as it came out, I bought it. And then like next time I fired up Game Pass, there it was. But anyway, you know, supporting the developers. And it's, it's, it's really good. It's really good. Because I think, you know, we all know what to expect when somebody picks up an old genre and runs with it, does it in an old-fashioned, you know, 16-bit style, although it's mostly 8-bit that people do, so it's nice to see a fully rendered 16-bit style game. And you kind of, you know, you know what you're in for, you know that they're going to do some stuff and innovate some stuff, but probably not much past what the genre was, otherwise you'd lose your nostalgia audience, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And what it does really well is that it, it brings the mechanics forward a little bit, but it doesn't do that at the you know the detriment of the original genre and the original genre is it's not actually all that easy to define it's kind of in that psycho fox dynamite heady um 
possibly Wonder Boy 3 Dragon's Trap kind of action RPG but with the really low emphasis on the RPG side it's much more yeah there's a skill tree and you can develop but it's 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 much more around the kind of like Wonder Boy in Monster Land kind of yep. level and you just walk you know, walking around hitting things with a sword in quite large platformy areas but it, it's just well for a start it's absolutely gorgeous so it just nails that 16-bit aesthetic but it doesn't it never lo- loses view of loses sight of it but it has more colors and it has you know more animation it never loses the feel but it looks better so that's great it's got a bigger playing field but it never really feels like it's compromising on the the speed of the platform in and stuff like that it makes things more puzzly rather than making them more reaction based but although it strips out the unfair side of things it still makes timing of jumps important yeah so it's it's like a it's like a rebalance it's like if you take something from back then and you strip out all of the stuff that was jank um which was thrown in there because if it if it was smooth and flowing as a platform game you'd complete it in an hour and they were trying to make it longer than that and actually just takes the jank out of it makes it really good makes it gorgeous and just turns it into a really excellent experience that you know makes you feel good again about them taking you know a 30 year old style genre and and making it new again yeah no i I, i've seen this um and it's one that i've got noted down as my once i've completed my backlog of stuff i i am obliged to talk about and write about it's on that list of like, I'll play that to myself um, because it looks right up my alley. It looks very interesting and you've done nothing to sort of um, suppress that. Yeah, no, uh, it's definitely one that I would recommend. Of course, it doesn't do anything new, really. You know, it, it does things really well, but it doesn't do anything particularly new. But That's fine. It, yeah, exactly. It just nails what it's trying to do. And it's just like if you were buying games back then and somebody brought out you know some sort of neo geo equivalent with this on it you know and just like oh yeah it's uh it's 400 quid to buy buy the machine and and you know 600 for the cartridge and five people played it because that was all that could afford it but it had that power that's exactly like it, it is it's like a 1991 game just supercharged really and uh if you if you're into that idea it'll it'll definitely be for you Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm the, yeah, I can't wait to give that one a go. Um, it's yeah, that, no, that looks really interesting. I'm glad, I'm glad we've got some impressions on that one. Um, so I've been playing a AAA game. Have you? I have, yeah. No. Um, but I've been playing a AAA game in the least AAA way possible. So <laughs> I've been playing NBA 2K22. Ooh. Yeah and i've ignored most of it and gone straight into the wnba excellent, um, excellent. because because it's probably the most leftist way of playing a, and it most leftist indie way of playing a triple a sports title with gambling mechanics possible Definitely. <laughs> um, now the reason i go um so pre-warning it's nba 2k it's got my player stuff it's full of gambling mechanics um don't touch them don't touch that side of it. Um, but for me, the NBA 2K games still play a bloody good game of basketball. Um, so the reason, a couple of reasons why I play the WNBA rather than the NBA is one, I want to do a feature down the line of um, representation of women's sports in the video game industry and the wider world um, and how they're perceived. And two, because for me, it's much more pure than the rest of the game. Um, they don't seem to have thrown all the crap that surrounds NBA 2K into the WNBA side of it. So there's a the W is like the my player um, type thing. So it's called the W um, and you can create your player and play, but it doesn't seem beholden to any of the stuff from before where you could barely upgrade your player. Um, it seems free of that. So you can play through naturally and everything it's got season mode playoff mode scenario mode all of that stuff with the official models from the wnba Uh, so it's got all the official like the proper courts and everything it's not just a reskin 
of like the men's engine the engine feels slightly different as well so the game's ever so slightly slower paced but not in a way that it feels like oh all we've done is take the speed elements down and done it that way it feels like it's like been built from the ground up to be the women's game now that may not be the case but if it isn't they've got their sliders spot on that they can make those internal adjustments to make it feel like that Um, nice so there's less dunking, less power dunking and stuff like that because that's naturally there's less of that in the women's game because women generally aren't as tall as men. That's a physical fact. Before someone goes, oh, you something women know I've not, you know, that is a physical fact. I'm not, you can't call me out for being a hypocrite or anything like that um, just because someone will. So the speed sounds so you'd like the game doesn't break as far. So if there's a rebound, they do break down, but it just doesn't have that ultra speed that the men's game has so it feels that bit more considered and again i don't know how it is in the states or how the actual wnba is perceived stateside or anything but whenever i've watched it on tv or even played it in the last few couple of um nba games it feels much more of an event than most other women's like growing women's sports are so for example you watch like women's football in this country like top level women's football and they're playing at non-league grounds so West Ham play in the WSL but they play at Dagenham and Redbridge or a conference team ground so good for Dagenham and Redbridge because due to other things they have to get that they get grants for making improvements to the stadium and the pitch and stuff like that uh, but at, since you feel there's not as an importance to West Ham women's team as there is the men's team same with Liverpool The women don't play out of Anfield apart from special occasions. They play at Prenton Park um, over the water. And, uh, but here it feels like for the WNBA, like they play in like well maintained courts. The money goes into it has, uh, you know, the, the, the pizzazz that goes with the NBA and it's all reflected within this game um, and it seems to me I, I had a little look at it most character models that I see in the game look like they're real world counterparts whereas again in when FIFA done women's football apart from a couple of standout stars the rest were just generic women's sports people and yeah, yeah so it, it for me, it looks like they put the effort into it and it just feels like the purest version of the game. The basketball's wonderful. If I'm going to be like, the one thing that really stood out is I've had to relearn shot timing because that's changed up a little bit. But that that's the same in both the men's side of the game and the women's side of the game within, the, within like the actual game mechanics. But really good game of basketball. The WNBA side of it is absolutely up. Oh, yeah, I love that. I want to see them build on that in all the right ways. But yeah, don't touch the my player stuff and the and the like the yeah, the bits where they just want all your extra money. Don't need that. I'd actually, if they decided to release a cheaper WNBA standalone game, I'd probably buy that one over the NBA. Yeah, well, I know you would, but it's really good that you're doing it because they definitely like track all the stats. Apparently, they've got. Just about everything that you ever do in the game is tracked and sent yeah. back in, in data. Uh, so, sent back in data. God, I sound like somebody in their 90s talking about things. <laughs> oh, you young people with your computers. Uh, so, but yeah, no. <laughs> Are tra- you going surfing again <laughs> on that internet? I know. On the World Wide Webs. Look out for the spiders. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's great that you're doing that because then they'll get stats back that show that it's being accessed and that's really important and so you turn in their own tools against them yeah yeah and what what i really like about it and it's one of the things i actually really like about basketball it's uh, like women's basketball um it seems to be one of the only sports that gives young black women a way of being celebrated in sport Most other sports where there's women's version, it's very much shared. But there's, you know, basketball has seems to have more black athletes per team than it does white athletes on the whole. That's something that's obviously changed over the years as well. Um, But it's a way of celebrating young black women as sports people. Um, And that, I think, is fantastic because 
when I look at the top players in women's football, they're all white. Um, I couldn't tell you if there was women's baseball, women's hockey, ice hockey. Again, the top players are all white, uh, mainly also because the, a lot of the top players are Scandinavian or Canadian. But a lot of the top players are white who stand out there. Like Hillary Knight is one of the outstanding best players of all time. And uh, Nora Ratti, Goldie, one of the best players of all time. Both as white as white can be. Again, nothing wrong with that. But I can't think of any other sports, bar maybe athletics, where you, you see young black women at the absolute pinnacle of their game i being lauded for that. So on that side of it, I think it's really good to see. And again, this is why I would like to see a breakaway game for the WNBA as a standalone thing, uh, because I think it will give them, again, being able to put them on the cover as cover stars and stuff like that would be really, really good to see. Definitely, yeah, yeah. That would be fantastic. And hopefully it will happen at some point. Um, it, like you say, it's great that it represents it, black women quite a lot. And I think, you know, mm. because part, I mean, partly it's a, a cultural thing in America of, um, you know, it, it, it's a it, it's traditionally a sport that appeals to African-Americans. I, yeah. You know, for, for various reasons that I don't know well enough to go into. Um, but it's also one that, like football in the rest of the world i.e. soccer um, and it, pretty much anyone can play and you can sharpen your tools in the way that you play it without yeah. being on an official court or an official pitch whereas yeah. you know the traditionally rich and in inverted comma sports that are flocked to by white people you tend to need all the equipment so cricket yeah. you know polo golf um, any ice hockey, any of that stuff is high entrance fees. You can't practice anywhere but the yeah. official places. So yeah, so working class people can get into it. And um, yeah, no, it's great. It's, there's yeah. a grassroots thing about it uh, across the world, but especially in America, that is very, very appealing. And in a way that stuff like the Premier League and the NBA straight up aren't. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And uh, you mentioned about sort of like how easy they are to get into. You're you're one hundred percent correct. You know, we know through growing up as children in this country that you don't even need a football to play football. Um, you can play it with a tennis ball. You can play it with a bit of paper, a tin can. We've all done that on yeah. the playground and the oh, street. Yeah. But the rule is get that thing into that thing by any means necessary from a young age. Basketball's the same. You don't need, you can play basketball with a football, essentially. You can play a variant of basketball with anything if you really, I mean, I wouldn't say like bouncing a tin can around, but you can play a variant of it with like a rock. You know, you get a stone and throw it to each other and try and get it in a basket. You can do that. You can create a basket out of an old bucket. You don't even need it up. You can have it on the floor. So you can always get a variant of that. So again, it's something you can just pick up and just go get that thing into that thing. And that's the sport. And they are always the most accessible. And I think it's why I think basketball is one of the most popular in America. It's why football is probably the most popular around the world. Um, I mean, again, American football is kind of, yeah, get that thing over to there. However, what you need to do is make sure you only do it in these little segments. And if you if you don't do it in this amount of time, then you've got to give the ball back to them. And they've got to come back. And then, But if they don't, they can choose to have a go or they can kick it or they can run. Or they, it's like, what? Whereas the other, they're much more pure. And I don't, I'm not even a big fan of basketball. But yeah, I do like playing the uh, 2K games. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, great. That sounds like a, a winner. Yes. And the last time I, done, I also pointed out, it's my most watched video on YouTube for uh, mental health gaming. It's also my most downvoted. <laughs> what, wait, playing the women's game on? No, uh, I can't remember whether I played the women's or the men's game on it, but it's um, I praised it because I basically just went, ah, sod all the other stuff. I just like playing the game of basketball. I'm not very good at it, but I just like the game. And I don't think people appreciated that I didn't go into um, great detail about the nuances of, uh, of NBA 2K and just went, oh, this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, it's worth getting the down votes for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, anything else from you? Sadly, no. I was trembling on the edge of a few other games, but I've not. It's not really come together. It's all part of my project stuff going on at the moment. But next week, I should have a good few to talk about. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I got a Pandora box arcade stick, and I'll talk about that in a couple of weeks once I've had time to properly play it. But yeah, retro baby. Yeah, 
Are you going to be all retro all the time over the next couple yeah, of it's weeks? A, it's, uh, no, no, but it's, it's, it's just, I'll, I'll step into some. We've got the double stick, so some King of the Fighters. Um, you, I didn't realise how many Kin of the Fighters games there were until my son. I went, what's on this team, Lucas? And he's going for the claim. It's Kin of the Fighters, Dad. It's like five pages of Kin of the Fighters. It's like, yeah, yeah. carry on, carry on. Yeah. Have you got Pac Man? I can't get past Kin of the Fighters, Dad. It's like, <laughs> it's like I think it's like 3,000 games on the field. I've got a feeling two and a half thousand to King of the Fighters. <laughs> yep, there were one uh, or two. Yeah, but play Pac Man. I've got to get work out when I can see better the settings. But, this led me into what I just wanted to touch on again. I spoke last week. I did have my eye operation on my left eye. And yeah, it's not gone well. Um, what, what's really frustrating about it is I said to the surgeon, uh, the consultant beforehand over the past few weeks is I've come to terms with my left eye. It's not going to get any better. So, you know, what happens if I don't want the surgery? And he's very much, no, you should do the surgery. Yes, it's 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 unlikely, but it's now or never. We should do the surgery, you know, give it the best opportunity possible, blah, blah, blah. Gets the end of surgery going, ah, oh, if you get any any vision back, that might be a bonus. It's like, okay. Uh, and I can, mm, yeah, no yeah. vision in that eye. I mean, again, I know I'm only like two, three, two days out of um, the operation, but I can't. It looks the same looking out of it as it was before so yeah that's not happening oh that's a shame yeah well so here's the thing i'm ticked off that i've sorry i know you're gonna have to beat but yeah uh, that i've had the operation uh because i knew it wasn't worth it but they seem to push for it and here's here's the thing that really frustrates me i went to the day of the surgery and they still was undecided whether they was going to do the left eye or see whether it was worth attempting everything on the right eye again now thankfully on the right eye i've not had any further major bleeds i've had a couple of little ones and stuff like that but the injection they gave me in the eye the other week seems to have done the business so i i I get longer parts of good vision before it all like if i sit still if i get up it all disperses and things go blurry again but it is improving so that is a good sign but i arrived there on the monday afternoon um for the operation and I go and like the nurses and the clinic, like the ward staff take me in. And what are you having done? I went, right, I think it's the left, but we're not actually sure until the consultants looked at it. So, uh, okay, right. So we'll start putting the drops in the left anyway, because that's the one you're down for as, as most likely. Go and speak to the consultant and he looks at both and he goes, right, what do you want me to do? What do you think's best? Well, it's not my eyes, but, but you're the one who's been pushing for this left eye. So I assume if it's now or never for the left eye, we do the left eye. And he went, oh, there is, you know, there is a risk with it and you might not be able to see. Like, but, you, 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 but you spent the last weeks telling me that the left eye is now or never and then giving me an option. You don't go for brain surgery and have the, and have the surgeon go, look, do you want us to actually try and get the brain working or should we just cut it out? You know, you're yeah. the expert. I don't, don't tell me I want to see again. Or if I'm not going to see again, I just want to know I'm not going to see again. You, you're the expert. You should know this stuff. Don't put it on me. But then I go, well, if my right eye isn't bleeding anymore or isn't having any major bleed, surely it's best to let that go as it is and just see what happens with the left eye, which he agreed with and he, he done it. And amusingly, I found another part of my body that tickles during the um, during the operation. Don't worry, the surgeon didn't molest me or anything <laughs> this like time. that. This time. No, no. But yeah, the inside of my eye is ticklish. That's bananas. I know. He's in there drilling. He's in there drilling. I don't know. It sounded like a dream. It might not have been a drill, but he's in there with something. And I'm, I'll try my hardest because he's going to me, right? Um, he kept misgendering me, but I, he's got knives and that. Well, whatever he's got in my eye, I'm not going to call him out on misgendering me. So <laughs> I, I, I let that go. He's going, sir, you need to sit still. I'm like, okay. So I'm like holding myself and I'm not going to try and tell him why I'm trying not to. I'm like, I'm shaking. He's like, are you okay? So I'm like, I'm fine. And he went, does it hurt? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it tickles so yeah That's there was that so weird. i know but then he told me that like the weirdest like the worst thing you can tell someone with adhd is can you please stay still because all i could concentrate on is guide i really need to move my feet my fingers are uncomfortable i need to uh, i need to move my arms 
but he's told me not to, so I'm gripping harder. And have you ever done that thing? So where you like interlock your fingers and you like try and gr- grip them together harder, and it just feels worse. Yeah. Well, I was doing that. I was going, oh, crap. And I, was, I was kept pushing harder, trying not to move, going, oh, crap, I don't know if I can unlink, but it's really hurting now. Um, go back to tickling my eye because I need something to distract. <laughs> hour and 45 minutes, two hours surgery. And like it was horrible because all I wanted to do was move <laughs> because he told me I couldn't move. So at which point I'm going, I did ask for general. Very first said, I said, General, I don't like fins in my eye. <laughs> Apparently, I do like fins in my eye. I find it hilarious now. Um, You're so weird. I know. Also, by the way, um, South Essex hospitals are crap for mental health. That was on the news the other day. I was like, that's oh, good. That's good. That's where I need to. That's who I'm with at the moment, trying to get my ADHD diagnosis. Oh, Wonderful. Bloody hell. <laughs> I know. Um, and it's like, it's, it's, yeah, so. Um, but when I was sat there, I got to a point where I've, I've, I've well, I was sat there. I was laying there. I was having the operation done. But I've got to distract myself somehow. Um, so I kind of, in my head, wrote the um, wrote the like the first few pages of my book that I'm going to attempt to write. Um, oh. But oh, I know. But guess what happened? Oh God! You got distracted by something. Yeah, and I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what it was going to be. Uh, but I've, what I have got is the title of the book, and I'm going to say what the title is now ahead of time. So if I ever need it, well, I can I can somehow I can go tell me what the title of my book was. I can go, yeah, just check out this episode. Um, <laughs> go on. It's, it's going to be called Notes of a Oh Look a Butterfly. Ah, very good, very good. Uh, yeah, or Diary of a Oh Look a Butterfly. I don't know which one yet. It depends on how it goes. But yeah, it's basically going to be me. I'm going to use the voice to text recognition software i'm just going to talk let that come down onto a page and the only editing that i'm going to allow for someone to do is to break it the paragraphs up so they're actually readable they're not allowed to do any punctuation because i don't talk with punctuation and um but and any spelling mistakes where it's where if the where it's misheard me He's like, it's spelt site, Ron. He's like, if it's spelt sites, for example, S-I-T-E instead of S-I-G-H-T or something like that. But everything else will be as it is. As I said, it might be crap, but I've got nothing else to do. Yeah, exactly. You might as well do it, an experiment. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite um, exciting, really. Yeah. But yeah, I can't take my daughter to school at the moment because I can't exercise for the best part of a week. No heavy lifting for two months, all for an eye that's completely buggered anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully, if it like no, I'll go back. I'll go back the Friday. So this, this already this already be out before I've gone back. But you won't know because we've called him before I go. Blah blah blah. But anyway, um, I go back on the Friday. Hopefully they'll go. Oh yeah, that's not worked, has it? And I go no. And then hopefully I can get my certification for partial sightedness and move on with my life a bit. But yeah, I, 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 you will see what it is. It's I mean, Friday, like I'm I'm glad the operation's done now. So off thing, I'll, I'll let you decide if you want to share. It. I'll send you a picture, show of uh, what my eye looked like yesterday. Okay. Um, it's not it's not bad. It. Do you know? Have you ever seen the film Blade? I have. Do you know where Stephen Dolph's eyes go red all of a sudden? Yes. Yeah, it looks a bit like that. I gotcha. But yeah, not the, the special effects aren't quite as good, even though that was 1998, I want to say. I think, yeah, or 97. 97 or 98, definitely. Okay. Um, this, um, that was the other thing as well, right? We've worked out how weird I am. Obviously, we've done that ages ago. That I can remember, like, Lorraine can't remember my phone number. But I can remember hers. I can remember like my old phone numbers, postcodes, stuff like that. But I forget every other little thing because I, I think I'm good with numbers. Can you remember your partner's phone number or fans? If I was just like, I, I don't want you to repeat it on the, on the podcast. But if I was to go, Stu, what's Mel's phone number? You could just put it straight out of your head. Yeah, it's 555. No, I, I've got no idea. <laughs> but then again, neither does she. And I only know mine because I've had it for like 20 years. See, I know... I mean, I don't know, because I've never bothered. I don't know my sons, because I've never learned it. I don't know my mum's, but I know my old phone number, my mobile number. I know postcodes from everywhere I've lived, bar the first place I lived when I was, like, six months old. I don't know that postcode. That's pretty impressive. But 
why do I need to remember these things? And why do they stay? <laughs> but I can't remember that I need to call the doctors today. It's, it's not memory. I don't think it's memory with ADHD. I honestly think it's your brain goes, yeah, but that's not interesting. These numbers are interesting. That's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's all tied to it. Well, not all tied, but it's tied to entertainment as well, isn't it? Because, like, if you want to remember, like, baseball stats, people can reel off, like, dozens of them, but ask them yeah. what the, you know, when the wife's birthday is. And I'm like, mm. And when I worked in an office, this is the last thing I'm going to say, I promise. When I worked in an office with a friend of mine, um, when I was, I'd have been about 21, 22, he was in uni, about 18, 19, something like that, anyway. He turned around and went, can I write my dissertation on how you think? And I didn't think about anything of it at the time. I thought he was joking. And then I worked out he was probably being serious. Oh, right. So you, you didn't take him up on it then? No, I probably should have let him do it. it wasn't, I was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But joking around with it. And I, yeah, it probably would have been a good idea. Oh, well, more stuff to put into the book. That's all it is. Yeah. It's good. I mean, I'm not, at least I'm not Dennis Reynolds. That's, I've been watching a lot of um, videos about it's always sunny dissertations and essays, and I'm not Dennis Reynolds, which is a good thing. Oh, love that show. But anyway, mm. yeah, <laughs> we could go on forever. So yeah. I'm going to shut up there. now. That's the only way I could shut myself up is by saying I'm going to. No, no, see, no, I can't, right, I'm going to be quiet. You finish. <laughs> Are you sure you want to be quiet? Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm just torturing you now but yeah we'll end the torture for the listenership so as usual have a great week follow us on all the socials contribute via Patreon or via Coffee if you can afford it otherwise have a great week stay safe and stay sane <laughs>